The human hip is a sophisticated piece of equipment that connects the leg to the body. Every step a person takes starts from the hip joint. It endures a substantial workload on a daily basis and is exposed to considerable stress and torque. My name is Winston Guathney, and I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Virginia, specializing in sports medicine. This video will provide the hip owner with information about how this complex piece of equipment functions. This is an x-ray of the pelvis. The hips are large joints on each side of the pelvis that connect the legs to the rest of the body. A closer look at the right hip of this pelvis provides insight into its structure and function. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint that allows each leg to be positioned during human movement. Motion within a ball and socket joint is rotational, and the muscles around the hip control the direction and speed with which the hip rotates. During routine activities such as walking, the hip glides within a safe range of motion that generates very little stress within the joint. Some positions and activities place significant stress within the hip and may push the limits of physiological motion. To understand the hip joint, it is important to understand its basic components. Bone is a structural material that makes up the hip and the rest of the skeleton. Cartilage is a soft lining on the ends of the bone that provides cushion within the joint. The labrum is a ring of soft tissue around the rim of the socket. It helps absorb shock and seal the joint. Let's look more closely at the structural material that makes up the hip joint, bone. The main bones of the hip joint are the pelvis and the femur, or thigh bone. On the end of the femur bone is a ball called the femoral head that fits within a socket in the pelvis. The socket is also known as the acetabulum. Bone is a hard structural material that makes up the hip. The way in which bones are put together form the internal structure of the hip, similar to how the framing is the internal structure of a house. Houses come in all shapes and sizes, and no two houses are exactly the same. Similarly, hips come in all shapes and sizes, and everyone's built a little bit different. Some hip sockets are shallow, and some hip sockets are deep. Some femoral heads are round, and some are not round. The term that we use to describe the shape and size of the hip joint is morphology. Some hips are more at risk of for getting injured because of how they are shaped. In some cases, the ball does not fit very well within the socket, and certain hip motions may be blocked or cause stress within the joint. This is known as femoroacetabular impingement, or FAI. In cases of hip dysplasia, the, shot, the socket is shallow and the femoral head does not fit completely within the joint. This hip is unstable and leads to strain on the overworked soft tissues trying to hold the ball within the socket. In cases of morphological abnormalities, the risk of injury is a product of the degree of deformity and the physical demands placed upon the hip. Bone is a hard structural material that makes up the hip. The supporting materials that sustain hip function are the soft tissues. The soft material that covers the ball of the femur and the surface of the socket is called cartilage. Cartilage is a cushion that absorbs shock within the joint and distributes it force evenly across the joint. Cartilage is also very smooth and essentially frictionless. Normally functioning cartilage is 10 times more slippery than ice on ice. This is the appearance of normal healthy cartilage of the femoral head. Normal cartilage is thick, supportive, and smooth. A hip joint with healthy cartilage is a happy hip. Compare the photo on the left of the healthy looking cartilage of the femoral head to the photo on the right where there is significant cartilage damage in the femoral head. Damaged cartilage is thin, so it does not provide much cushion. It is irregular, so it cannot evenly distribute the forces across the joint and it is rough and creates friction and inflammation as the joint moves. Compared to sleeping on a soft cushion, a hip with, a hip with cartilage damage is like sleeping on a rocky road. It's a little harder to get a good night's sleep on a rocky road and you'll find that you'll wake up sore all over. 
Small focal and traumatic cartilage injuries may be amenable to treatment, such as this lesion that underwent a microfracture procedure. However, many cases of cartilage damage in the hip represent much more chronic injuries caused by wear over time. Diffuse cartilage thinning in the hip is more like advanced tread wear. This tire wore out over thousands of miles. Note that misaligned tires wear out unevenly and more quickly. The same concept applies to the hip. On x-rays, the health and thickness of the cartilage may be inferred by the clear space between the two bones. Cartilage does not show up on x-ray and therefore gives the appearance that two bones are separated by a space. This is called the joint space. As the cartilage starts to wear, the joint space narrows and the two bones appear closer together. Bone spurs will frequently start to form as the cartilage deteriorates. Advanced cartilage loss is marked by complete loss of the joint space. This joint grinds and does not move fluidly, leaving the stiffness and pain. The health of the joint is dependent upon the health of the cartilage. When developing a treatment plan, the condition of the cartilage is absolutely critical. A hip with deteriorating cartilage is like a deteriorating house. It does not make much sense to repaint this house. Similarly, it does not make much sense to attempt an arthroscopic repair on hips with bad cartilage. In cases of arthritis, a hip replacement is a much more logical and durable solution. Cartilage is one of the most important soft structures in the hip joint. We will now talk about another critical soft structure. The labrum probably gets the most publicity when patients are dealing with hip injuries. The dreaded, the dreaded labral tear on MRI is the most common reason for referral to my clinic. Most patients don't know exactly what a labrum is or what it does. The labrum has several critical functions within the hip. Let's start with the basics. The term labrum actually is Latin for your lip and your hip labrum shares many of the similarities of the lip in your mouth. The labrum is a soft O-ring shaped structure that lines around your socket and acts like a shock absorber distributing forces. Throughout the entire hip range of motion, the labrum remains in contact with the ball and helps to stabilize and seal the joint. It also helps to, it also helps to distribute joint fluid within the hip and lubricate the joint. Remember that the labrum is attached to the bony room of the socket. The bone is hard and the labrum is soft. During some activities or, or injuries, the labrum may be pinched between the ball and socket and, the, um, and bec may become injured. With high flexion or sudden pivoting, the labrum can be crushed between the hard bones, leading to inflammation or damage. With repetitive or excessive pinching, the labrum can tear. This is an arthroscopic photo showing a labral tear. Labral tears can have a variety of appearances and degrees of severity. Most patients with labral tears will agree that a torn labrum can hurt. Why does a labral tear hurt? For one, the labrum is highly sensitive. Most of the nerve fibers in the hip joint are located within the labrum and an inflamed labrum generates pain. Additionally, unstable labral tears can catch or pinch between the ball and socket leading to mechanical symptoms and deep joint pain. Unfortunately, a torn labrum may be aggravated by routine activities such as running, driving, or sitting. Fortunately, many labral tears can be fixed via minimally invasive arthroscopic surgery. These are arthroscopic photos demonstrating a torn labrum fixed to the bony rim of the socket with suture anchors. Remember, as we discussed before, the health of the hip is dependent upon the health of the cartilage. This is critical when planning treatment for labral tears. As the hip joint wears down, the labrum can become frayed and torn within this, by the dysfunctional joint. Note that all arthritic hips have labral tears. Fixing a labrum in an arthritic hip would be like applying a fresh coat of paint to this broken down house. To summarize, the hip is a wonderfully complex joint at the center of every step we take. The ball and socket structure is assembled by the bones of the pelvis and the femur. Cartilage within the joint provides a cushion and gliding function in the ball and socket. The labrum is a soft O-ring that lines the socket and absorbs shock and seals the joint. 
A healthy hip is a happy hip. For more information, you may visit these online resources. And always, you can find us on uvaortho.com. Thank you for your time.